Welcome to Adaptation, where we talk about film adaptations and the original material they're based on. I'm Kendall Bryant, and I love Seven Brides for Seven Brothers. It's more than a little problematic, I'm totally aware of this, but I still can't help but adore it. I love the music, I love the choreography, the costumes even, and I can and have watched it over and over and over again. But it wasn't until this week that I found out that it's actually based on a short story by Stephen Vincent Benet called The Sabin Women, which was originally going to be the film's title until the studio realized that nobody wants to see a movie called that. Of course, if you have seen the film already, you know that there's a song in it called The Sabin Women, in which the titular seven brothers decide to take their cue from the Romans and the rape of the Sabine women and go steal themselves some brides. The story by Binet also follows the storyline with one big difference. The bride stealing is Millie's idea, which pretty much just makes it more problematic than the movie. The beginning starts out much the same as the film, except for there's a little bit more backstory on the Ponape family, and how it's decided that the eldest, in this case Harry, should go get himself a wife to take care of these seven men who, you know, couldn't possibly take care of themselves. So Harry goes to town and he finds Millie, pays the innkeeper 12 beaver pelts and a hunting knife for her, and then takes her back home where she finds out about the brothers and all that's expected of her. She cries, but you know, gets right to work, and they all come to love her. But after a while, her husband notices that she's not looking well because she's working all the time and never gets a chance to sit down. So he decides that his other brothers need to go find themselves wives to take some of the pressure off. So all the brothers try, but they can't find a girl that's willing to marry into this family since they've seen how hard it's been on Millie to take care of all these guys. Shocking. So Millie says, and I quote, You great big lumps of men, there's more ways of killing a cat than choking it with cream. If they don't marry you after you ask them, why don't you marry them first and ask them afterwards? Yep. And then she explains about the Romans and all the brothers go off and carry all these girls back to Ponape Valley. And that's when Millie turns into Miss Master Manipulator. She pretends to be absolutely livid at the brothers and makes them stay in the stables, just like in the film, and really talks bad about these backwoodsmen in front of the girls. But when the girls find a wedding dress in the attic, they're just all so desperate to get married that Millie has to admit that there are six wedding dresses and a hedgeman nearby that can perform the ceremony because that makes sense. But even after everybody's married, Millie still insists on keeping everybody separated and only lets the guys into the house for short visits every day. It's basically the whole tell somebody they can't do something and they want to do it even more trick. So they all love each other and want to be together and what have you, and when the townspeople come to rescue the girls, Millie has them hum contentedly while doing housework so she can be like, see? See? They're really happy! The whole thing might as well end with Millie winking at the camera in collusion. So while the movie certainly has outdated views on the roles of women, the character of Millie stands up for herself and demands to be treated in a certain way, and she stands up for the other girls and makes the brothers realize that they have stolen them as if they were things or possessions instead of, you know, people. Okay, so the plan actually works in the film as well, and all of these girls fall in love with these guys, which is, you know, ludicrous but it's not enough to put me off the film entirely. I love the different personalities of the brothers, the ABC names, the hierarchy between them that kind of gets turned on its head when Adam is being supremely awful, and of course their fancy jewel tone shirts. And most of all, the Lonesome Polecat song and choreography is perfection. Overall, the film really does improve on the short story. I mean, in The Sobbing Women, Millie condones the kidnap of these girls, reverse psychologies them into staying with these guys, just so she doesn't have to take care of all seven of them herself. Granted, she shouldn't have to do that in the first place, but maybe she could have found a different solution to that problem? Don't just listen to me, though. I have linked the story in the info section, so have a read, watch the movie, and let me know what you think in the comments. Don't forget to check out our podcast on iTunes, follow all of our social media, which is also linked down below. Until next time... Please, please forgive me for loving a movie that starts with a song like Bless Your Beautiful Hide. I know it's awful. It's so bad. Ugh. So Harry goes to town and he finds Millie. He pays the innkeeper seven... Twelve. God, I'm underestimating her worth. <laughs> oh, God. Gross.